Okay, I'm going to show you how I painted my Formica countertop with Gianni countertop paint. Um, the paint kit costs about $90 or so, um, and I got the white diamond kit. It comes in many different colors of granite. I also, this set is for granite, but I made it look like marble the way that I did it, and I'm going to show you the steps I used. Everything that you need comes in the kit. There it comes with instructions, a DVD that you can watch on your computer, and then all the products from, it's done in steps. So you would start with a black coat for your primer, and then you just layer these other paints, and they all say step one, step two, step three. You can't, it's really easy. You also get a brush and rollers and the sponge. The sponge is um, what gives the texture for granite. But for marble, I ended up ripping this apart. I didn't really want to have a, a granite look. So I took the sponge and I made little pieces so that I could make veining for marbling, which I'm going to show you how I do, how I do that. Okay, besides the kit, you also want to have these things available. A drop cloth. I like this tape and drape. It works great. You put it all around your countertop to protect your cabinets. You also need paper plates, the ripped up sponge, two different types of paintbrushes. One very fine and the other one a little bit um, soft but stiff. These are you're going to use to soften the veins. Can opener, 100 grit sandpaper, tack cloth, plastic gloves because you get paint all over your hands, and pictures of marble that you like. Having a picture, I got this out of a magazine, and this is just a Formica, a fake piece of uh, marble, but when you have that as your reference, it helps you make more natural looking veins. So they're good to have. I also have two containers um, with lids. These are just fast food containers that I use and this is what I mix the paint up to make the veining. And when I get to that point I'll go into this in more detail. Okay, before rolling on the primer coat, you need to prep the formica, and this is really important. You want to prep it well. It has to have all dirt and grease off of it. So what I did was I first sanded it with 100 grit sandpaper. Just went over it like this. Go over the entire surface with the sandpaper. Rough it up. You want to do the edges too. Sand it smooth. Then I washed it with detergent, just put detergent on with a wet rag and just rub that in and clean all the sanding grit off and make sure that everything, all the oil is off. Rinse that all off and then I took it one more step because this, if, if the primer doesn't adhere well then your, your painting is, is not going to work, it's just going to chip off. So then I took a scouring pad, like SOS or a Brillo pad and went over again, went over the entire surface to make sure every little bit of grease and grime was off the counter. And then I took a clean rag with water, rinsed it all off, and then let it dry. Then you're ready for your primer coat. You want to start rolling the primer on against the wall. First you actually want to use the brush to get into the corner and into any kind of crevice between the backsplash and the counter. And then you want to take the roller. Just one, you don't have to do it, you want this coat to be thin, not too thick. And then just continue that all along the counter where the um, paint, then just bring the roller up again to connect the two swipes of the roller. Do it in a sunny spot because that will really help you see if you're missing any spots. 
You don't really want to go over it again until it's dry and you can just touch it up after eight hours to see if you missed any spots. Again, this should be really thin, not too thick. Okay, now here's the hardest part that most people think is hard, but it's really not hard when you want to paint your own Carrera marble. So you get your, your countertop to the, the whiteness you want it. There's many layers of sponge um, white limestone on here right now. To do the vein, you're going to mix the, the black primer that was that you used for the first coat with half of the white limestone. You're going to mix these together, and what you want to create is you want to create two colors of gray paint with them. So make one add more white and one would have more black. They're, that, they're gonna be what you're gonna use to make. You also need two little pointed paint brushes. One that's a little, really thin and one is a little bit thicker. You could also use a feather, but I find that feathers, um, I don't really like the feathering, but what you use the feather, you dip it in and you kind of do like that and bounce it around. I'll show you how to do it, but you could use a feather. And you need two pieces of the ripped up sponge. Damp, make them damp and then wring, wring out the extra water so that they're damp. And once you have all that going, you're ready to go. So to start, just like when we were painting, um, you just want to do bouncing. And you don't have to mix these up really well. The, the, the more that they're not quite mixed up really well, um, it's good because you don't want like solid color of color. You can have a paper towel or, um, I have cardboard here, but you have a paper plate or paper towel, blop some of it off. And just like when you were doing the sponging, you're working on an angle, the same thing. You wanna just work on an angle. So you just wanna kinda of bounce it around like that. This real light, thicker in some points, thinner in others. It looks kind of funky right now, but you, it will get there. And you just kind of keep doing this, working on angles. And then you have to decide, look at a piece of real marble, and you can decide how much veining you actually want. Some, some marbles really has a lot, and other pieces do not. I like it a little less. I made my counters with less, but it's totally up to you. So just kind of do that, and then take 
one of the damp sponges and just up and down. You want to make it look like it, the veins are kind of floating on water. You know, like they're floating under the surface. You don't want the veins to look like they're on top. So that's why different layers of... So say you don't like something. You're like, eh, I don't really like that. All you have to do is take the white limestone, dip a sponge into it, and if you don't like a certain area, you just go back over with some white. And you keep doing that until you like what you see. So let that dry for maybe like 10 minutes, just so that it's... So you see how I softened out what I just did? And if you see, and you don't want anything to be too, too harsh. And again, like some marble has like little darkness. So if you have like a little splotch like up here where it looks a little darker all around, that's good because that's what real marble looks like. So if you want to try it with the feather, what you would do is you dip the feather in some water first, get a little wet, and then dip it in your paint, dip the tip, blot it, take some of it off, and then just, again, on an angle, just bounce. See how it, you can make it thin and thick? Again, work on an angle. And follow, if, if when you were sponging your white limestone on, you could see like I have, there is already striations here from the way I did that. Put that white coat on. See how I'm running out of paint here, but that's okay. Because you want some of them lighter, you want some of them darker. Again, if you like, you don't like the way that looks, maybe you do because it, that's real marble kind of has that look. You just blot it. Keep blotting until you like it. And really, that is all there is to it. I'll do this. This is a good. Some feathers are better than others. This one is a new one. It hasn't dried out. So let's see it goes. And then take this one. Usually, marble doesn't have crosses like that, but it does sometimes. But if that, if you don't like that, just take the water, the damp sponge. To remove that if you think that's too thick and you don't like that again the damp sponge with no paint kind of just blends it in so it's kind of like a an underneath where that where there's going to be a, a, a vein See how the layers just make it look more realistic. So it, it's just not putting the, the paint on and leaving it. You always have to go back over it a tad. Just really light dabs. And if you have too much, then get some white limestone back on it and go over it with white limestone. So let's see, that little blob there, I don't like that. And then keep turning your sponge so you're just not... And you can get a few clean sponge. Clean out your sponge when it starts getting a little dirty so you have a clean one so you're not just reapplying the paint back onto the surface so you just keep doing that until you're finished and then again the biggest thing is always to work on the angle on your countertops like follow in my post you could follow I have a draw a diagram work like that along your counters and once you have the veins the way you want and you like the way it looks and you're thinking hey that looks pretty good then just let them dry. And let them dry your... Okay, so you can see how I just continued on adding some more. I usually like to use the lighter color more, but there is black. And so say I'm gonna come up here. I'll just move this up here and show you again how to just keep 
connecting it. So here's, here's this one, and here's a vein coming down through here. So let's take this, and you can kind of connect it like that, and maybe take this branch out like that. Thick and thin. So then see, there's a little line there from the sponge painting where there's still, you could see some of the black. That's the perfect spot to add a vein. And then that's really all. Just do, and then take your white and just blot to soften just a tad. And there you go. So we just have to let this dry. When you roll on the poly, you just want to go in one direction all the way you can and then right where the edge of the first roller was you want just a slight overlap and then take the next one up just slightly and that first roller the first time you put the poly on it might not fill you might have some roller mark like light roller marks or the roller just didn't get down enough poly and you might see some shiny spots and some dull spots just let that be let it dry and then the next time for your second coat you can just give it a little sanding with the sandpaper again, the 220 grit. Remove all the grit, and then for your second coat of poly, you want to roll this way. Roll. I'm not going to roll now because it, it will just bring up the poly and it'll make it, you'll see texture. Like if you put, if you keep rolling like this, you'll get texture and you don't want that. That's why it's just best to just go one light roll and just be patient and wait. It will, it will settle down and smooth out by itself. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, um, just leave it in my blog post and I will try to get it answered as soon as I can.